from the very first time our parents decide to be husband and wife or to come together to have a baby, either incidentally or coincidentally, there is an accident that have occurred somewhere. The accident could be you got sick when you are still a little boy. The accident could be something tempered with your life when you are still a child. Some people, they got, they became vulnerable to environmental dangers. Some people, they were dropped out of school. Some people, they were affected. These are accidents that occur via your coming to this world or via your existence in this world. There are some people your parents told you that before you were born, there was a complication in your mother's womb that it looked like you must be aborted to save the life of your mother. All these things, they are what we call the accidents of life. And therefore, what actually brought about these things, they are done or they happen because the very first day you are conceived in your mother's womb, two spirits run after you. Are you with me, child of God? Two spirits ran after your formation. Mind you, we were blood before we became human beings. And that is why they will tell you, you are, the, you, you are from this bloodline. You are from this bloodline. And they begin to describe your forefathers or your parental uh, uh, lineage. Ladies and gentlemen, what everybody must be very sensitive to, which voice has passed across your bloodline? Which voice has become authoritative over your bloodline? Which voice is speaking today over your existence today? Which voice today is manipulating you? Which voice today that is speaking in the blood? That today you feel something is talking within you, but you don't know the source of it. You don't know who did it. You don't know who said it. You don't know how it is happening. You must address it today. How many of you, you have felt at the moment, something is wrong in my father's house? But you cannot really figure it out what is actually wrong. People are not getting married. People are not getting job. People are not forward, forward in their education. People are not getting uh, what they're supposed to be. You made yourself and compare yourself and look at the neighborhood. You see people are getting access to destiny, but in your family something is wrong. You know in within you something is wrong, but you don't know what is the source of it. It's a demonic prophecy. Demonic prophecies, they are labeled in the blood. Demonic prophecies, they are labeled on the blood. And so the blood is the most peculiar thing in the human existence. And that is why if you read the Bible, you will discover that God himself warned us not to eat blood. Because he categorized blood as the life of a person. But for the demons to walk against you, they have to use the bloodline. If a demon is walking in your family, he does not only come just as a demon, he marks the bloodline. Every curse that somebody will curse anyone must first drop on the blood. Because on the blood, covenant is validated. Are you with me, somebody? Therefore, you need to understand what actually has persisted in your genealogy? What are the frames and the picture that you have placed either seven generations behind or seven people within the family right now? If you are seven in number in your family, take a statistic of the four first people. What is wrong with them? If it show a similarity, it means there's a blood curse in the family. If you are seven and three or two have been dropped out of school, it means there's a curse that has to do with education. Oh, you are not even responding. I'm, I'm doing this, I'm doing this because of the ability of the prophetic. Now, before I will go further, can I tell you my story? Can I tell you my story? Now, I told you I was born a prophet. I was born a prophet. My birth from the story of my birth, I was a prophet. But do you know it do not matter whether I was born a prophet or not, there was a problem in my bloodline. 
God doesn't care. God doesn't care who you are. A law of birth is a law of birth. That is why Jesus had to come through the tribe of Judah. Because it's that bloodline that was selected. He should, have, he should have come through other tribe, Levi and uh, Simeon, Gath, and whatever you are. But he came through what? Judah. Why? Because there was a word that came upon the blood of Judah. And so even when the testimony of the birth of Jesus Christ was supposed to be diverted to other tribe, it still had to linger to come through Judah. Number one, you should know Ruth was a Moabite. Ruth was a Moabite. But the trace of the birth of Jesus Christ is in conjunction with her motherhood. She had to leave. I'm trying to tell you why some of you, you met wrong people and you married them. If there's a demand that you are going to be victim of something, you can connect a man, wrong man, from another place. Just to come and fulfill what was spoken on the blood. I'm telling you out of my personal experience. That it has nothing to... I, I told you, I am a born prophet. Anybody who have looked at my trace of life from childhood to what I am today. You know that I was born a prophet. But there was a problem in my father's house. a problem. What is the problem? Polygamy. You look at this. Polygamy was there. I think this subject, the whole, the whole world Christians need to know. So that when you battle your enemy, you don't start battling them outside the circumference. You battle them within the blood. I want to tell you, everybody seated here has a trace of polygamy. If you are an African, you may not know where the story ended. You may claim that it ended with your last four parents. Are you with me? Last four parents, you may lay the claim to that point. But let me tell you, in the blood, it does not stop. It still has its comma there. The comma that is there, it takes... It takes divine interference to edit your bloodline. Which we are going to do it today. We need to edit something. If you are careful with my teaching, you will try to reflect a certain histories you can imagine in the village or around you. Sometimes it could be an uncle. Sometimes it could be an auntie. Sometimes it could be somebody you are related to or somebody you are coming from the same village with. But the demon respects the word spoken long time ago because covenant on the blood is stronger than covenant of the word. Are you with me? Are you with me? Now let me tell you why I was telling you my story. I was one day fasting and praying and my eyes got open. Lord told me, he said, you shall not eat for 31 days. You shall not eat, you shall not drink, for I need to deal with your blood first before you start with me. Now to tell you, many people will give you a claim if you are born again, it's just you are born again. Don't take it that way. Deal with foundation and forces. Because to be born again, it means you are going to heaven at all costs. But to succeed in this world, it takes you breaking barriers. Are you with me? In this world, it's all about what? Breaking barriers. Because everybody seated here, there is at one point or the other, barrier. What is barrier? To barricades. What is barrier to block? What is barrier to raise a standard? Your intention is to be across, but you are placed on the side. <laughs> One 
one lady once said this. She looked at me and said, "You, I don't know the kind of human being you are." I said, "What is it?" He said, "I don't understand you." Why would you understand me? If you understand me, I will answer Paul. The day Delilah understood Samson, that was the day Samson fell. So now the angel who spoke to me said, "Thirty-one days thou shalt not eat, thou shalt not drink, because I have an assignment for you. But this assignment, you must first have a dealing that has to do with the bloodline. If not, you will go up, and one day you will come down." Because you are the platform to which God manifests His work in. After God dealt with me, show me the kind of poverty my family was uh, uh, stricken with. Show me the kind of troubles that went on in that lineage. Show me the kind of thing that happened. It was not too long after then. My father told me something. He said to me, he said, you are leaving school, you are coming back to take care of the sheep and all other stuff at home. You will leave school. Then I knew what the angel was speaking to me is true. Where? Come back home. You see, it's not my father speaking, the blood speaking. What God did was to reveal to me the bloodline. Tell your neighbor, exposing the bloodline is the solution. So at that particular moment, ladies and gentlemen, at that particular moment, after the Lord revealed to me all this, I now saw also alcohol in the lineage. Drunkness was there. Divorce was there. Unfaithfulness was there. Mention many that you can mention. They were there as a suitcase. The Lord said to me, he said, I must first deal with this. And for me to deal with this problem, you must not eat, you must not drink. Why is God asking me to do that? It is when your body is weak, the spirit will have access to it. Because the Bible says, before Adam came out of Adam, Adam had to sleep. Other way around, it could be fasted. Adam went into what? Spiritual anesthesia. An ascetic performance came upon his life. And he slept. When he woke up, what did he see? He saw the flesh of his flesh and the bone of his bone. That means when the Holy Spirit walk on your bloodline, walk on your bloodline, Walk on your paternal and maternal bloodline. Ladies and gentlemen, it will come out with a result that, the, that, that will be satisfactory to help you to reach your destiny. Many of us, we are crying over something that we are supposed to be out of it for a long time. We can come out of it. The problem may not be your immediate father. Maybe your last father. Maybe the last of that father. Because curses can run through four to one to four generations. It can operate. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Am I talking to somebody? All right, now look here. Now, before we go towards this, you need to know that before you can fight this thing, you also need to know what you are fighting for or after. You don't know your enemy, you cannot win your enemy. The identification of your enemy is the revelation of your success. When you know who is your enemy, it means you can tackle your enemy with a strategy of what he or she has been revealed to you. I walked towards that. And when kids were coming up to smoke, I wasn't smoking. To drink, I wasn't drinking. To go after ladies, I wasn't going. Genesis chapter 49. Let me tell you something. Four and nine. Right? Four and nine. Why did this scripture fail within four and nine? Let me tell you. It's one of the it's one it's one of the powerful numbers. And I told you the other time I said we have four corners of the earth. Now, let's read from verse 1. 
his sons. We are reading what? 4, 9, verse 1. And Jacob called his son and said, Gather together that I may tell you what shall befall you. There is something he wants every child to befall every child. He wants to split the blood according to his word. He wants to dictate to the line of the blood according to what? His word. Now, this is not God speaking. This is Jacob speaking. This is a prophecy. If I say, it shall be well with you, I have spoke to the blood to receive wellness. Now, look at what he said. Gather yourself together. Why? Not that people... I will show you how prophets. Why will Jacob ask them to gather themselves? Why not call them individually? Why not call everybody one after the other? But Jacob decided to say, gather yourself all together. There are causes that are done in a crowd. There are prophecies that are secret prophecies. There are prophecies that are public prophecies. You need to know which line did your prophecy come. Now, ladies and gentlemen, next week I'm going to treat this one for you. How to pursue your prophecy. When prophecy is released, two spirits are released. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Either positive or negative. Two spirits will contend over the prophecy. And that is why some people, they have been prophesied to that they are getting married in a particular year and a particular date and it failed. It's not that the prophecy is not true. Two spirits went after it, one conquered and one was left. Gather yourself together and hear you sons of Jacob. And hearken to Israel your father. What is this word hearken? That means whatever he prophesied, I receive. That was the word hearken, receive. So this was a prophecy that they were forced to receive the prophecy, either good or bad. Because of what? Because of the fatherly influence. That is why you need to be very careful who father you. You need to be mindful who is fathering you. Some of you, you are under a hot tempered father. And carelessly, that father has altered something to your life. And that particular thing had access over you because you went under that father according to the law of submission. In the law of submission, it's not about I receive, I connect. You are already connected and you are already following. Whether I'm, am I really talking to you? All right, here we go. Verse 3. Look at it. Reuben, that's the first person to receive the prophecy. Reuben, you are my firstborn. Number one, the prophecy came to declare him as a number one. That academically, you are to succeed as a first position. Spiritually, you are the firstborn. Everything go first, 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 first. That's the first prophecy. Now let's look at it. My might. That means everything you do, you have the strength to do. Reuben, you have the might to conquer your enemy. You have the might to get the GP. You have the might to succeed in business. Look at it. Because of what? You are the beginning of my fruitfulness. This crown I gave you for being number one from me. Look at it. Something will shock you. And of my manly strength and of vigor, your birthright gave you. I leave you as number one in the family. Anybody that calls you, calls you firstborn. Anybody that sees you, call you a mighty man. Anybody that sees you, call you the man of strength and of value. A man with a vigor. But look at it. The preeminence in dignity and the preeminence in power. You will go before every powerful man. 
you go before every powerful individual, you will have access to destiny as number one, 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 one. But look at the shocking thing, number four. But with your number one, you remain unstable. That's the cause. Be careful with what comes over you. Be careful with what comes over you. Look at the first introduction was positive. But the box that the next close that portray how his first position will be, his first position will be what? He will be unstable. 